It's the Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J Anniversary Show. If you're listening, we appreciate it. We about to do it. Let's go. GlobalScaleRadio.net Open your ears, strap on your thinking cap, socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week. It's time for Ain't No Half Steppin' with Marcus J. Sellers has Jordan, Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up and scores it at the buzzer! Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago! Watch it, Boris alone! Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! He hits one deep to right center! That ball is out of here! The Yankees win the pennant! GlobalScaleRadio.net If you're lying, then you must be happy. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus Joe back once again for a live show. It's the anniversary show, y'all. December 3rd, 2012. Anniversary, anniversary show. We went live for the first time on Tuesday, December 6th, 2011. So we are celebrating one year on the airwaves of Global Scale Radio.net. Get down with us tonight on the anniversary show, 804447. 0601 get down with us tonight on the anniversary show 804-447-0601 of course as we do every single week we got a live show for you a hot one you could have been anywhere tonight but you chose to be with us on ain't no half stabbing with marcus j we appreciate it we appreciate the love that we've gotten over the previous year and we hope to be here for another year and another year and another year for, uh, for a long time So we want to thank everybody for listening to us We want to thank our new listeners on MixLR If you're listening there We appreciate it Share, like us on Facebook Ain't no half step on Marcus J on the fan page Hit us up on Twitter at N-O-H-L-F-S-T-E-P-P-I-N As Big Rube always has to back me up on it But I seem to have been getting it right the last few times Ain't no half step with Marcus J Is live on Global Scale Radio.net Where we continue to be the highest rated show On these airwaves And it's because of you folks that we continue to do that week after week after week on Mondays from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. here on GlobalScaleRadio.net. We got a live one, got a lot to get into tonight. We got uh, the NBA segment that we're going to do coming up here momentarily. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about what happened uh, over the weekend in the National Football League. We had some great games. We had some tragedy. We're going to get into all of that. We got a mission child that we're going to profile as we do every week. Uh, then Big Rube is going to lead us in a fishbowl. We haven't had one of those in a long time. And then we're going to wrap it up with what the hell as your man Marcus J is going to ask the question, what the hell? We got a lot of guests. Uh, we got people who you may know. We got people who you may not know. It's going to be a live show uh, for you tonight on Ain't No Half Stabbing with Marcus J. So as I do every single week, I like to go around the room and I like to introduce uh, my crew uh, and the uh, first person I'm going to introduce is the lady in the room who we haven't seen in a couple of weeks, but we appreciate April P joining us. April P is in the building. What's up, girl? Hey, hey. Good. How, how you doing? I'm good. You doing all right? Yes. Good to see you, Thank man. You. you joining us for the anniversary show. You was here with us from very early on in the tenure of Ain't No Half Step and Marcus J. It's good I to was. see you here. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. At the, at the one year mark as we kind of move forward as we begin our launch towards the next year. So you doing all right? I'm doing great. 35 years young yesterday. Yeah, girl. You know, look, day over 25. Girl, that's what I'm saying. I get my high five. I right, and I'll be expecting a payment in a few minutes. So anyway, you know what? Know. That was over, that was over over the top. You jealous? Ain't no half step with Marcus J. So we got we 
got somebody in the building with you tonight. Who we got with us, April P? Who we got with us? Who, who we got with us tonight? Oh, I have my little one. She's doing her homework. She's doing homework. Yeah. How you doing, Miss Lady? Grace. There you go. <laughs> Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Of course, we go around the room because we're going to do our greetings brief tonight because we got a lot to get into. So uh, you just heard from him a moment ago. He's out from under the hood. and He's back ready to join the living. We got Carlton Banks in the building. What's up, brother? Not much, man. I'm a lot better than last week. That's what Dad going to show. I think he looked nice. I'm sorry. Well, you know. You I mean, ain't we, see your we, face. We'll, 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 talk, we'll talk more about his performance on the show last week when we get to the football section. Uh, of the show but you doing all right bro i'm doing good wonderful wonderful it's glad to see you back amongst the living i see you obviously in a better mood after what happened last night so that's what's up big bro yeah big bro yeah what's up brother what's up brother uh done much just chilling you doing all right man yeah man you know how it is hold, hold tight hold tight we got it we got a live line we're gonna come <laughs> to you live line just a minute live line Big Rube, what's up, brother? Uh, nothing much, man. Just chilling. You doing all right? You know it. I'm good. Yeah, man. How was the weekend? Uh, you know, it was all right. Working. Yeah. On Saturday. You and I got some business to attend to in about an hour and a half, don't we? I mean, you know, I guess you if you like to, to, to lose, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know. I, I don't I don't like to lose, and I don't expect to tonight. Uh, but we're gonna move on. We're gonna move on. We're gonna do the salutations real brief tonight because we got, as you just, uh, as you just heard uh, a moment ago, we we got some guests on the line that we're gonna be bringing in real quick. But before we do that, I want to say peace to the babies that we got in the building. We got uh, Lil Banks in the building. What's up, Lil Banks? How you doing, little man? He playing his game, so he ain't even he ain't even thinking about it. And we also got an appearance by Mama J in the building. What's up, Mama J? Hi. How you doing? Good. It's good to see you, as I see you every single day. But it's good to see you here in the building on Ain't No Half Step and Marcus Day. You chilling with Daddy tonight? I'm good. Who's winning the game tonight? We are. And who are we? We are the New York Giants. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Back with us on the live line. <laughs> yeah, brainwashing. That's right. Brainwashing is good. Back on the live line, we got. Uh, National Basketball Association analyst here on Ain't No Half Stabbing with Marcus J. We got your man K Dub. What's up, brother? Yo, what's going on? What's going on, man? How's everybody doing? We doing wonderful, man. And uh, we understand that you got a guest with you on the live line. Hey, you, yeah, you, 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 you know, should be familiar with our uh, with our fan base. What have you got a uh, former NBA player, uh, uh, college uh, college All American and uh, high school All American and. Uh, Honorable mention with Sean McLeod in the building. What's going on, Mr. McLeod? What's up, bro? What's good? What's good, family? How you doing, What's man? Everybody doing? We doing well, man. Thank you for joining us on our one year anniversary of Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. I uh, wouldn't miss that, man. That's what's up. I appreciate it, man. So, Kato, we gonna we gonna get we gonna get right to it, bro. We gonna get right to it because you know I want to get Big Rube out of the way real quick because I don't really want to talk about his team. But because he's here and I like him, I guess I got to give him his shine. But I'm going to give it to him first so we can do it quick. All right? So what's going on in La La Land? Hey, Rude, man. It, it looked like looked like the, it looked like the ship is still a, a little unsettled right now, man. Y'all are having some turmoil inside uh, Lakerland. What I understand, you know, last night, uh, through some errors for the end, you know, the White House not being able to convert on free throws and, and Kobe Bryant, after the game, calling out Pau Gasol, you know, things um things looking a little uh, unsteady. Uh, uh, Ruben, can you, I mean, can you tell us? Well, first of all, i like to I like to say I would like Bernie Bickerstaff back. <laughs> because if I'm correct, with Bernie Bickerstaff, he was undefeated as the interim head coach of the L.A. Lakers for this year. So that's the first thing i like to say. Uh, the second thing is, you know what, man? It is what it is. It's two year. It's two seasons. We're gonna get through Christmas, and you know, eventually we'll write the ship. You know, with Paul Gasol, I think the problem is Paul Gasol. They they haven't figured out a way to fit him in the office, and if they can't figure out a way by Christmas, it's just time to trade him. Because to be honest with you, Kobe calling out Paul, eh? You know, I can live with that. I don't mind that because usually when Kobe calls you out, that means you perform a little better later. So, if if it works out well, it does. If it doesn't, then he'll be traded by the trading deadline. It's that simple. Really? Okay. Well, well, well Rashawn, what what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I just think that uh, you know, with 
the way you look at these players, you know, a lot of these superstar players that are on this team are not LeBron James and not a Dwayne Wade, you know, players that are being traded in their prime. You know, outside of Dwight Howard, most of the stars that have been all stars, you know, year after year are at the tail end of their career. And the problem with this team is they don't have a they don't have the, the glue guy. You know, I mean, they don't have enough of the Ron Artest at, at the at the other position, you know, in their second unit to be able to sustain the, the level of play. And you know, when that when that when that comes about, it frustrates you as a, as a player. So you know, and plus, you know, Steve Nash will be will make the team obviously a lot better and get guys ball when they deserve it, when they need it, for them to be effective. But you know, without them, it, it hurts the team completely. I, I agree, but you know, I don't know if anybody else caught this. Dub might have caught this. I think it was what Friday night when we beat the brakes off of some of Denver. Um, yeah. and you know, Jody Meeks decided he felt like playing, and Antoine James had like thirty three points, and Kobe had like fourteen. Later that night, Kobe was just like, "Yeah, you know, we'll get." I think what he said something to the effect of, "You know." Wait till tomorrow or some the honeymoon is over, whatever, whatever. Basically saying something to the effect that, you know, the outburst, the offensive outburst is something he knew that wasn't going to withstand. But ultimately, I felt like he was a little salty because he only got 14 points and Jody Meach came off the bench and dropped seven threes and became a fan favorite. And we saw Antoine Jameson become the Antoine Jameson when he was in Kentucky. Oh, you mean you mean? You mean uh, you know, excuse me, North Carolina. North Carolina, my bad. Yeah. Wrong guy. My bad. What 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 do you think? Uh, I just think the team's a bad a bad fit. You know, sometimes players don't 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 gel together. Just because you got a bunch of good players, don't make it a good team. And you know, the one thing I you know I played on a team in 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 uh, 2001 that went to the finals with the with the Philadelphia 76ers. And that team wasn't as talented as a lot of other teams. They had a great player in Allen Iverson, and they had a bunch of guys that knew their role. And I think the problem with this team is everybody, night in and night out, has a different role, and no one wants to be. No one has any consistency. And and regardless of the talent that you have on your team, lack of consistency is going to be the downfall uh, of your team. Hey Dub, there's a surprise team uh, out there on the West Coast. We're going to keep it out West for a little while. Tell us about that surprise team. Uh, well, you uh, know, previous you know, to this right here, when we talked about the West Coast, we talked about the Clippers, we talked about San Antonio, Oklahoma City, of course, and Memphis is a little bit of a surprise. You know, they, they out to a, a, a quick start. But Golden State is 10-6 and six right now. And, you know, when we were talking about these particular teams, you know, we didn't talk about Golden State was ten and six, who has basically the same record as the Clippers right now. A lot of people aren't really talking about them. Yes, it's still early, but you know, we've been talking, we've been giving the Lakers a lot more light than Golden State, who's basically tied in the Pacific with uh, with the Clippers right now. We talking about the Lakers because we got a Laker fan in here. But I'll be honest with you, if it was up to me, I, I think I would turn the light off uh, on those dudes. But as far as the Golden State Warriors. Uh, we got a little fun kinship going on with their head coach. It looks like uh, Mark Jackson is doing some 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 pretty good things out there. Who, who pretty much is leading the charge uh, in Golden State? Why are they winning games right now? Well, they have a lot of young talent, and I, you know, Ro would uh, definitely agree with me. I would assume a lot of young talent that's buying into his particular system. You know, uh, you have out there Stephen Curry, you have David Lee who, you know, when he was with the Knicks was very formidable. You know, you have um the uh the draft pick that they that they just uh that actually I'm not gonna say surprising, but you know, he I I would say personally and well you can uh if you can back me up on that, but I didn't think that the production that they were getting out of the uh rookie I would think that it's a little bit early. What, what, I mean what do you think as far as his production that he's giving to the team? Um I, I I've always been you know, ever since Mark Jack took the job, and last time we spoke, I brought up the Golden State Warriors saying that when they got healthy, i like to see what they really look like. Uh, you, you're 100% right. They're buying into, they trust Mark Jack, uh, you know, but they're young, 
and they got a great mixture. You know, if you look at the teams who do real well, the big guys really still they they tough. Uh, you know, you got David Lee, you got Bogut. You know, they're very skilled big guys that can rebound, they block shots, they play defense, and you know, scoring is like fourth on their list, but they can do that. Uh, and then when you got guys that the way that they shoot the ball from the perimeter, uh, with Curry and, and Barnes and you know guys like that, it, just, it makes for you know Brandon and Rush and you know when you can when you have good ball handlers that can kick out the three uh, and they get wide open shots, uh, it, it's fun to play that way as a basketball player. When the more open shots you get, the more your confidence goes to the roof. So I, I think Mark Jackson just got those guys playing in a different uh, on a, in a different gear. Uh, than everybody else is still fight some, you know, some injuries that they're recovering from. But, uh, you know, as a whole, I think eventually they're going to be one of those teams a year or two from now that we're going to be talking about night in and night out. I want to go ahead and set something up because I want to get the opinion of the entire panel on this one. Uh, and I'm going to start with the lady in the house on this one, and then I'm going to come uh, to you, Ro, and then to you, Dub. Um, last Thursday night, uh, you had the game uh, of the week. Basically, you had San Antonio Spurs playing in Miami uh, against the Heat. Uh, prior to that game, the coach, Greg Popovich, uh, decided that he was going to sit uh, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. He was sitting them. And instead of literally sitting them on the bench, he put them on a plane and sent them home. Uh, so April, I'm gonna start with you first. What is your thoughts? Because I got other angles that I'm gonna that I want to really get into on this one, but this is the angle I kind of want to take mm-hmm. with you. What's your thoughts on that act? I I, I don't want to give away too much of what my thoughts are. Okay. The fact that he, the coach did that. What are your thoughts? As a fan, I hate it, but as a coach, I understand it. Um, I mean, and I guess part of that is coming from my teaching career. And you make certain decisions that work best for your class and your group and what you all need to do to be successful. And it may not look good, feel good, sound good in the short term, but in the long run, that's what works best for you. Um, But as a fan, you know, as a fan, I'm a teacher. So when I fork over my dollars to see some all-stars, that's what I want to see, you know. I don't want to hear about they need rest or we have a big game coming up or anything like that. I want to get my money worth, you know. Times are hard. My dollars count. You Rashawn, know? you you played, uh, and you played in the league while Greg Popovich was, was coaching. Uh, my first question to you is, from your impression, what kind of guy is he? He's a great guy. I mean, you know, very personable, you know, funny, you know, witty, uh, you know, good with words. Great motivator, uh, but he's a realist. So when it comes to winning, he understands what it takes. So you know, I, I look at it like this, man. You know, I, I can understand, you know, being a fan, but at the end of the day, you either love the game or you don't. You're going to come, whether they, who, no matter who's playing, uh, if you love basketball. Uh, so I, I understand this decision, but nobody made a big deal out of it when the, when the Brooklyn Nets sat Jerry Stack out. You know, it's the same situation. You know what I mean? Like, he's an older guy. He needs it. I mean, you, know, you don't want to put yourself in a bad situation, you know, to, you know, in your season and the injury because your players are tired. Now you got an ankle injury, a, a, a pull, a groin, or a card or something because of the feet. You do what you got to do because it's more than just a game in the season. You want to win. You're, you're in this to win a championship year after year, especially when you got older players who, who need the recovery time, uh, especially recovering after the short season last year where a lot of players were injured, that goes to show that, that when guys don't have their rest, you know, the worst could happen. Hey, Doug, what's your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, I agree with everybody else. You know, I, I understand it from the fan perspective. I understand it from the just basketball fan perspective, and I understand it from the NBA money machine perspective what what really is the real uh, uh slippery slope that david stern has started is that now you know he did not find popovich when he's done this in the past this isn't something new you know he's done this in the past maybe not as early during the season or maybe not four players four players out of the starting five at one time but he's this is not anything new for him so are you going to start finding coaches 
toward the end of the season when the playoffs are starting to come, when they want to rest their veterans, or you know, uh, are you going to do? Are you going to fire Popovich again? And then is it going to be an escalating process? You know, it is it, is real uh, is real slippery at the way that because of the fact that the fine came in. How are you going to handle it going forward? Well, it's, to be honest, though, one, one last thing. Shola, I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. When is the NBA? NBA don't own teams. You know, they see what they did with the Hornets. Bunch of bad decisions. It's not the NBA's decision. Bottom line, say who should play and who shouldn't. You know, it's the coaches and the organization decision. You know, it's ridiculous that Popovich was fined in the first place. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I understand the big picture. But, at, you know, when, when you're dealing with uh, a guy like Tim Duncan, that, that, it's not like the Miami Heat just went out and trampled the second unit for San Antonio. I mean, San Antonio is a good team from start first player down to the 12th player. And, and they went out and proved that. I mean, that night, I mean, it, granted, they didn't, it didn't come up a win, but it was a scare for the Miami Heat because they, they, they were losing most of the game. You got to look at it like Man this. Man knows what he's doing. You got two marquee teams playing against each other. If I'm as a fan walking in the door, I want to see your starting five, your best five front forward. I don't want to see your next five. I want to see your best five. That's what the fans were paying for. Now, it'll be different. Who cares? But that's, that's the bottom line and the realization is, that, is who cares what you think as a fan. If you love the game, you're going to come in. You're going to come whether, you, you know, whether they play or not. Yeah, but if I'm a season ticket holder... I have a right to see who I'm supposed to see. Now, granted, if they're injured... On, on your team, it was an away game. The Miami Heat team season holders have a right to see the Miami Heat fan team. Right, but, but don't they, they get they the right have, to see the marquee players from those visiting teams? They don't have preference over those teams. You didn't pay to see those teams. You paid your, you paid your money to see the home team. That's why you're a home... You're not going to cheer for the San Antonio Spurs as a Miami Heat season ticket holder. That's not your job. The job is here for Miami Heat. So with that being said, it's like you have no, you know, as a fan, you come to see the Miami Heat twice. Watch the Miami Heat. What if I'm that San Antonio Spurs fan? I mean, as a, I'm going to see, I'm paying to see good games, right? Regardless of who fan I am. It's, it's, you want a few, you want a few, you know, you're looking at the big picture. You want a few. And, and I don't know any government, I don't know any team, I don't know any organization that really cares about the few. I uh, look, Go ahead, Big Will. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. First of all, two things. One, the reason why Stern find them, and he probably won't say it, but the reason why he find them is because let's let's be serious. The Spurs and the Heat play twice a year. They played. It's a national TV game, and you know what? It kind of messed it up for the TV. It's about the money. If you just start sitting players when you want to sit players, then. Why should we show your game on TV, which means people will start to lose money? One. Two, I think it's a bunch of crap. Excuse my language. It's a bunch of crap that he says anybody for the simple fact that, you know what, if they hurt, at least lie to me. At least be like, yo, Duncan was hurt. He had a, a strained fibula or, or whatever. At least attempt to hide the fact. He went basically said, you know what, I do what I want. Yo, go home. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, I sent him home. What's up? To me, that's a bunch of garbage because what if everybody started doing that? Then that be, you, I understand people like, well, he does what he's got to do to win a championship. Nah, man. When does it come to the point where the situation is, you know what? I'm going to sit Duncan 30 games out this year because he's just old. That ain't fair. You know, I, let, me, let me get in. Now, this. I got a, I got one question. How many how many how many guys played you know, four games in five nights? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, but no. you know what? You get paid. They get paid. All right. Let me let me do this. I'm, let, I'm let, let, me, let, let me let me let me do this. Let me let me do this. First thing, I want to answer a question on the fan page. Jay Grizzy, our illustrious former host, is not a fan of uh, David Stern. He he says that he uh, shouldn't have done it. Pretty much, and I'm paraphrasing, but. Uh, I disagree, and he also is questioning David Stern as a as a commissioner. I disagree. I think David Stern is a great commissioner. You wouldn't have yep. the NBA the way you have the NBA if it wasn't for David Stern. That's the first thing. I disagree with you, bro. The second thing is, I agree with Roe on this one. Who cares what the fans think? Who cares what the fans think? You know why? Because it's Greg Popovich's job 
to keep his team healthy. It's not his job to worry about some fan in Miami who wants to watch Tim Duncan. Now, the devil's advocate, and I haven't said anything on it, but let me let me get this point out, Big Rube, because okay. Big, Big Rube's getting in next because he, he wants to debate me on this one. Who cares what the fans think? Now, the devil's advocate will say the fact that San Antonio is a higher-tier team. So in Miami, you're going to pay more to see the Spurs than you are to see the Golden State Warriors. I understand that. But that's not Greg Popovich's problem. It's not his problem. And where in his contract does it say he has to play his marquee players? It doesn't. So find me. I don't know about any unions. If there's a coach's union, yeah, I think I'm appealing that fine. That's a BS fine, for real. All right. First of all, it's, for me, it's not even about the fans. I care less about the fans. It's about money. It's a, if people start sending their players – then money will start coming will stop coming in the NBA because what's going to happen is you build a level of distrust. Oh, we're showing this marquee game at eight o'clock when people are going to watch. And what if they sit LeBron? Oh, everybody's up and off. They sit LeBron. You can't do that because that starts a bad precedent. It is not my fault that Duncan is 35, 36 years old. Oh well, you had 200 days to get yourself straight for the for the season. R- now, R- I mean, hold on for a second. And I'm just like, I don't, personally, I don't care whether he did it or not. My thing is, he did it with the intent of saying, I do what I want and I don't care. My thing is, hey, if you're going to do it, just do it the right way. Let people, let the appropriate people know. And that's why Stern fined him. If they had been like, yo, these four people are hurt, I'm sending them but back. But why lie? Going back. But why lie? But why I'm not? Send, I'm sending them because they're old and I need to rest them. I don't get what the problem is. Well, the problem is that one... Everybody says, well, the NBA if the NBA is bigger than everybody. If without the NBA, you're playing overseas. Or oh, we can recreate, or oh, you can go to the CBA. Yeah. Let's just be real. It's about money. Yeah. It's, it's overly about money. And if teams start sending their marquee players, regardless of what their season or their stretch was, then people will <laughs> not watch. Go, people will not pay go ahead. And, and stuff. Go ahead, Doug. That's logical. That, that's logical. That's logical. But you know what? The world is not a lot of place, man. At the end, when when the ref when the when the, uh, the referees in football so bad, every oh god, the referees awful. Everybody was still watching, and you know what? Ain't nothing happened in the football. Ain't, basketball is one of the biggest companies. NBA basketball is one of the biggest top five companies in the world. Correct. It ain't going nowhere. But you know, you know what? I mean, Everybody's been programmed to think that the best players play in the NBA. There's a lot of players in Europe. There's a lot of players that don't play in the NBA that are in other countries. They just choose to be in other countries because of a business decision. The NBA is not going anywhere, regardless of what the fans complain about. Basketball is way too big these days. It's become a conglomerate. It's a money maker, and it ain't going anywhere, regardless of what you know what the fans might say. And, and and you know, and I'm a fan of the game. Don't get me wrong. I wanted to see Tim Duncan those guys play. Yeah, but uh, uh, let, let me ask you. Say, this. I ask you just one question. I'm done. So basically, pretty much, if if you're if you're uh, the commissioner, hey man, all you gotta do is fill out this piece of paper, and we good. I'm too good to fill out a piece of paper, so I'm not gonna do it. Okay, you're you're fine. You're suspended. Why didn't Popovich just fill out the piece of paper? Because that's really all you had to do. Just fell out a piece of paper. But to me, it was an ego because Pop is like, I do what I want. Man, all you do is fill it out six hours before. Everybody's cool. Just fill out the paper. That's all I'm saying. The, uh, oh, the, 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 a, day, a day in the life of an NBA coach to prepare for a game is minute. Is, it goes every minute of the day. You know, like people, you, we see the game. You guys don't see the behind the scenes of preparation, walk through, you know, film. And all it's a it's a fourteen hour day to prepare for the game. You know, we watch the game. That is the that's like the icing on the cake to what those guys put in before to get ready to play the game. So you know, when we talk about all of this, it's a job just like everybody else. Sometimes you call in sick and you don't want to you don't want to go to work. That's what you do. Yeah. Uh, and I get How that. How much money you make? And I get that, but he sent him home the night before, and all he had to do was fill out a piece of paper. I, I just disagree with you. We're gonna leave it there because we can't go. I think we've kind of talked. I think everybody's kind of made their point. Uh, you know, I understand where you're coming from, Ruben, uh, but I'm gonna side with Roe on this one. Uh, at the end of the day, 
You know, it's the coach's job to worry about his players, and it's not his job to worry about the fans. That's David Stern's job. David Stern did what he felt like he needed to do. Uh, it is what it is. Last, last thing, last thing, real quick. Uh, Dub, give us the real quick recap on the NYC. The last time we talked, we were getting ready for the Knicks to play against Brooklyn. We ended up losing that game in Brooklyn. Give me a real quick recap on what's going on in those two towns before we let you get on out of here. Uh, everything's pretty much the same. Uh, you have on um, the Eastern Conference, you have Miami on top with New York behind them and New Jersey behind them. I think out of the three, I, you know, people will be a little bit surprised at the fact that New Jersey is in the top three in the Eastern Conference. But, again, you know, it's still early. Uh, New York is pretty much uh, starting to get the uh, injury book. Uh, uh, Raymond Felton hurt his hand uh Yesterday and earlier in the weekend, uh, Ronnie Brewer hurt his hand, but uh, both are still playing right now. So it's still early. They still, uh, you know, jumping on Carmelo's back, and um, uh, Jason Kidd is still day to day right now. Um, the Nets, uh, Brooke Lopez has a uh, problem with his foot. He's going to be out for some time. You know, uh, he hurt it actually, I believe, the next day after the Knicks game. Um, so, you know, they're dealing with that. And then uh, I'm sure all of us seen by now the fight between uh, Ray John Rondo and uh, Chris Humphrey. You know, that was a little comical. It was, it was kind of kind of corny to me, but, you know, hey. I like that cheap shot that Humphrey's yeah, got that. in. <laughs> he liked the cheap shot. All right, listen, brothers, we're going to have to leave it there. We appreciate it. Rashawn McLeod, everybody, we appreciate your information. Thanks for joining us on our one-year anniversary. We appreciate any time you have an opportunity to join us. Of course, as you know, we still got several more months of the National Basketball Association. You're welcome. Anytime you bring an insight that those of us uh, laymen on the subject cannot appreciate, so we uh, well, cannot uh, uh, live through it. We've never been there, so we appreciate it. Mark it, Jay, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. K Dog, we're gonna talk to you next week, brother. Hey, hey, real quick, man, real quick, man. I just wanna say, look, man, happy anniversary. I appreciate you, you know, extending out, you know, a little bit of the portion of the show that I can uh I can help you, man. So I, I appreciate this, man. And happy anniversary, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you both. Uh we got Rashawn McLeod, we got your man K Dub on Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. We appreciate it, fellas. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a break. And when we come back We're going to talk to the dating pool diva about the tragedy that befell the National Football League over the weekend. And then we're going to get into the games. Marcus J. Ain't no half step. And it's the anniversary show. Be back in a minute. Hey, it's your girl, Mary Roberts, from ODU and the back-to-back WNBA champion, Houston Commons, representing from the ATL. On Monday nights from 7 to 9, I'm always tuned into the number one show on GlobalScaleRadio.net. Ain't no half stepping with my boy Marcus J. Don't forget to call in and join the conversation.